Can supercapacitors challenge batteries, and if so, should they? Or should they rather work in conjunction with batteries and perhaps take electric vehicles to the next level? And could supercapacitors perhaps one day replace batteries altogether? These are the avenues we'll be exploring in today's episode, but first, let's get plugged in. Hello everyone and welcome to EV Source. My name is Harry and I'm your host for today's dose of EVs and technology. Ultracapacitors or otherwise known as supercapacitors have come a long way since they were invented. With the leaps and bounds being made with capacitors, they've gone from being able to store a tiny amount of energy to now being able to store enough energy to be considered as a power source. Aside from providing electricity for an extended period of time, they can also be charged very quickly. We're talking from a few seconds to just a few minutes, depending on the size and the power available. There's been another development, combining the technology of supercapacitors with lithium-ion batteries, making so-called hybrid batteries. The usual downside of supercapacitors from batteries is that they don't provide electricity for nearly as long. However, with lithium-ion capacitors, that is quickly changing. The same goes for supercapacitors that have seen a lot of improvement over the past few years. And guys, if you're new to the channel, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything going forward. This really helps out with the channel. Now let's get back to the video. Supercapacitors hold the charge as static energy unlike batteries that store the energy in a liquid electrolyte. We all know what can happen with batteries when things go wrong. This makes supercapacitors much safer. Supercapacitors are already used today in multiple applications. For instance, in buses that charge every 4-5 to five miles, in trains to capture the vast amount of energy when stopping, and in microgrids to inject power when the demand is high. The major benefit with supercapacitors is the amount of power they can output in a matter of seconds. Something batteries cannot do unless you put a whole bunch of them together to output power at the same time. This is how the Tesla Model S, for instance, is able to activate the ludicrous mode. If the battery pack was smaller, it wouldn't be able to accelerate as fast. But by making the pack bigger, the car can access more energy at once to enable a quick acceleration. But batteries do not like to be discharged that quickly which is why it's not recommended to use the ludicrous mode too often. And they also don't like to be charged quickly, which is why periodically using superchargers will degrade the batteries faster and reduce the battery pack's lifetime. But with supercapacitors, this won't be a problem. If you need to accelerate fast, the supercapacitors could provide the energy for extremely fast acceleration and thus taking the load off from batteries during accelerations. And just like they can discharge a vast amount of energy at once, they can be charged very quickly as well. Depending on the size of the supercapacitors, charging them can take anywhere between a few seconds to a few minutes. Supercapacitors don't have an overheating problem, unlike batteries. This is why charging lithium-ion batteries takes so much time. They can only accept a certain amount of charge at a time and the energy input decreases as the battery gets full. Think of it like a glass that's empty. At first, you can have water flowing into the glass at a fast rate, but as the glass is getting almost full, you have to slow down the water to prevent it from overflowing. Supercapacitors, on the other hand, can take in vast amounts of energy all at once without slowing down. Another advantage of supercapacitors is that they can do millions of charging cycles. So why don't we use them in electric cars today? Well, unlike batteries, the supercapacitors don't have enough energy density, meaning they cannot store nearly as much energy as the batteries do. The new dry batteries from Maxwell Technologies that was acquired by Tesla have an energy density of 300 watt hours per kilogram, whereas a typical supercapacitor available today is around 10 watt hours per kilogram. That's 30 times less energy than in a battery. But here's the good part, they're getting better. There are new breakthroughs happening in the supercapacitor front that are enabling them to have more energy storage, bringing them that much closer to lithium-ion batteries. One of the new breakthroughs includes the much talked about wonder material called graphene. Graphene is a thin crystalline layer of carbon at one atom thick that is organized in a honeycomb pattern. This material is one of the strongest materials ever known. This one atom thick material is 100 times stronger than steel. And this new wonder material can revolutionize almost everything, from consumer electronics to more efficient solar panels. Scientists at UCL and the Chinese Academy of Sciences have developed a flexible graphene-based supercapacitor that can safely charge at high speed and store a considerable amount of energy for a long time. 
the new supercapacitor uses a multi-layer graphene electrode that can bend up to 180 degrees without losing its performance. Several research and development labs have confirmed over 50 watt hours per kilogram with graphene based technologies. A paper from 2017 shows a graphene supercapacitor with an energy density of 148.75 watt hours per kilogram. The paper goes more in detail about the supercapacitor, but I'll leave a link in the description in case any of you are interested in knowing more about it. And as I continued my research into supercapacitors, I found that there are labs that are claiming up to 600 watt hours per kilogram in lab samples. But wait, before we make any conclusions, let's see what the professionals have to say about it. According to Carl Jung, who is the founder of Precision Technology Inc and has a degree in engineering and aerodynamics. Once the lab samples are packed in commercial packaging, such as a pouch cell, this 600 watt hours per kilogram translates to around 150 watt hours per kilogram. This is approximately 60% of the specific energy of the battery cells in Tesla EVs today. But due to supercapacitor self-discharge rate, we can expect about 70% of usable energy. So for instance, an 80 kilowatt hour pack would give you about 56 kilowatt hours of useful energy. In a Tesla Model S, that's about 200 miles of range or 320 kilometers. And in a Tesla Model 3, that's about 300 miles of range or 480 kilometers. And since supercapacitors can fully recharge in a few seconds, provided there is sufficient power available, the lower mileage per charge could be acceptable. Let's quickly do a rough estimate on power requirements for a 5 minute charge of 80 kilowatt hours at 480 volts, which is what the Tesla version 3 superchargers are operating at. I'm not gonna bore you with all the math, so I'll just show you the results instead. So to charge from 0 to 100% in 5 minutes means you would need a 1.8 megawatt charger and an internal bus network inside the vehicle designed to handle this kind of current. But let's be a bit more realistic though and dial it down to what Tesla version 3 superchargers deliver today, which is 250 kilowatts. This means to charge it from 0 to 100%, it would take you about 35 minutes. So as you can see, the only bottleneck here is the charging capacity. If we had 1 megawatt chargers, the time would instantly be dropped down to less than 10 minutes for a 0 to 100% charge. Now this is starting to sound more reasonable, isn't it? One of the major reasons why we don't have megawatt chargers for EVs today is that they use batteries. And batteries cannot accept that much power without overheating and possibly exploding. Supercapacitors sound very promising, but they do have a long road ahead of them before automakers like Tesla start replacing batteries with supercapacitors. But what if we did not replace the batteries with supercapacitors, but instead use them together? There are multiple ways supercapacitors could enhance EVs today. Using Tesla vehicles as an example, they come with regenerative braking, which gives energy back into the batteries. But not all of the energy gets stored. A substantial amount of the energy goes to waste simply because the batteries cannot take in so much power all at once. But supercapacitors can. Even having a 1 kilowatt hour supercapacitor would enable electric cars to soak in up to 95% of the energy from regen braking and use that energy for quick accelerations or to slowly charge the battery pack. This could increase the battery pack's lifetime and reduce the load on the batteries. And putting this together with better efficiency with regen braking, you could get more range out of the vehicle. More range, longer battery lifetime, faster acceleration, and fast charging. For example, if a vehicle has a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack, reducing it to 40 kilowatt hours means it would take less time to charge it. And adding a 10 kilowatt hour supercapacitor would bring the total power back to 50 kilowatt hours. Charging the supercapacitor would take just a few seconds to maybe a minute. So when you need to add range quickly, this could be a way to do it. Additionally, the 10 kilowatt hour supercapacitor could continue charging the battery pack while you're on the road. If the load on the batteries is less than what the supercapacitor is delivering, then you will see the available range go up as you're driving. But if it's the opposite, then your range will continue to go down as it would normally, but at a slower rate. Either way, this means you would spend less time charging and more time driving. Although supercapacitors still cost between $2,400 and $6,000 per kilowatt hour, experts are saying they may soon see a similar cost drop as batteries have in the coming years while increasing the energy density. And since Maxwell Technologies specializes in supercapacitors, this might be one of the reasons why Tesla acquired them because there may be some future potential that Tesla sees in this technology. The area that I was studying was that, um, advanced capacitors. Right, so essentially capacitors that have an energy density um, exceeding that of batteries. Because they have a very high power density, but, but low energy density. Yeah. Obviously, if you, if you could make a capacitor that had anywhere near the energy density of a battery, and, and with this incredibly high power density and its quasi-infinite cycle and calendar life, 
then you would have a, an awesome solution for energy storage in mobile applications. The dry electrode batteries could be just the tip of the iceberg. Just like there are companies already making lithium ion capacitors, perhaps we will see them for Maxwell Technologies as well, now that they're working together with Tesla. A hybrid battery that's part lithium and part capacitor with considerable amount of energy density might be exactly what we need to truly make electric vehicles the best sustainable solution for future transportation and other energy needs. Or perhaps they will make their own variation of graphene-based supercapacitors. The possibilities are almost endless, but only time will tell which direction these technologies will take us. One thing is for sure, this could make 5-10 to 10 minute charging time a reality that would quiet all the naysayers on EVs because of their long charging time. Nevertheless, these technologies will continue to improve and over time we might see substantial changes in electric vehicles. Remember, we're still just beginning the journey with EVs. One aspect that accelerates and improves technologies used in consumer vehicles is racing. Just like the technologies from Formula 1 cars made consumer vehicles better in many ways, for instance fuel economy and efficiency, the new Formula 1 E may one day do the same for electric vehicles. Supercapacitors could also be used in heavy-duty vehicles and semi-trucks for a quick burst of energy to get them moving before the batteries take over. The graphene-based supercapacitors could also be used in mobile devices such as phones. This would get rid of the long charging times and enable phones to be charged in seconds or in just a couple of minutes. The possibilities are endless. So in a nutshell, batteries and ultracapacitors are complementary technologies. Batteries provide energy for the long term while ultracapacitors provide the fast reaction and high power. Together, I think ultracapacitors and batteries are the future of electrification, and if used in EVs, it would enable fast charging and fast acceleration while putting less load on the battery pack and thus increasing its lifetime. And maybe one day, ultracapacitors can replace batteries and enable all electric vehicles to charge to 100% in less time than it takes to fill up a gas tank. But that is yet to be seen and could possibly be reality somewhere in the future. But for now, they could be used together with batteries for better efficiency. So guys, what do you think about ultracapacitors? Should they be used in EVs and do you think they can one day replace batteries altogether? As always, leave your thoughts and comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this episode about ultracapacitors. And if you did, hit the like button so that YouTube knows to show this video to others who might be interested in this topic. And subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell icon so you don't miss anything going forward. Here we are again at the end of the video. I find it very exciting to watch how technologies are getting better at a fast rate. But what's even more exciting is the rate at which this channel has been growing lately. I wanted to take a quick moment to recognize this and thank each and every one of you for helping the channel grow and being part of this amazing journey with the channel as we discuss and discover new things about EVs and technology. We also have a new patron on board who just recently became a fully charged EV source member. So a shout out to Luis Aizpuru. Welcome on board and thank you for your support. You are amazing. By becoming a patron, you're not just getting your name in one of my videos, but you will also gain access to EV Source exclusive content and get your name highlighted in EV Source Discord channel, which by the way is free for everyone to access. This version of support will ultimately help the channel grow and provide more and even better content to you, the viewers. So if you would like to show more support for the channel and see your name on the show and have it mispronounced by me, consider becoming a patron today. Also, you can find me on Facebook and Twitter for more discussions about these topics. Thanks for watching and remember to keep charging ahead and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe and take care.